Hello and thank you very much for joining us uh, again. Uh, we are here today at the SCTS 2016 in Birmingham and I'm Mohammed Bashir for the CTSnet uh, Aortic Portal. Uh, today we are discussing a very uh, nice topic. It's the IRAD, the International Registry of Aortic Dissection. 17 years on, what have we learned on acute uh, uh, aortic dissection? And for this, uh, I've asked and invited, actually, uh, two eminent people from the IRAD registry. On my left here, uh, without any further ado and presentation, it's uh, Professor Christoph Nienebar from the Royal uh, Brompton Harefield in London, and uh, also uh, Dr. Marco De Siano from G. Mazzini Hospital uh, in Italy. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, just to uh, set the scene, the International Registry uh, of aortic, uh, Acute Aortic Dissection, the IRAD, uh, group analyzed trends in the presentation, diagnosis, and outcomes of aortic dissection over the past 17 years. They started uh, in 1999 uh, to current 2013. Uh, they established uh, the following. They said uh, the clinical presentation of acute aortic uh, dissection did not change. Uh, they said that the use of uh, CT scan uh, as a diagnostic modality uh, increased. Uh, the role of uh, chest x-ray um, uh, in the diagnosis of acute dissection has diminished. Uh, surgical results of type A and type B aortic dissection uh, improved. And uh, endovascular therapies were applied increasingly in, uh, for type B dissection. They also added something on medical therapy. They said beta blocker, angiotensin receptor blockers, diuretics, and statins uh, were prescribed more frequently uh, as at hospitals discharged following acute aortic dissection. And the last point uh, mentioned, hospital mortality improved for type A aortic dissection, but not for type B. So around these points, they, I'm gonna uh, um, uh, throw some questions around this and see what's your assessment uh, of all this. The first question, obviously, to you, uh, Prof. Nienabar. Could you clarify to us and to our viewers, obviously, uh, what is meant uh, that clinical presentation of type A aortic dissection did not change? Very, <clears throat> thank you very much for the question. Again, even in 2016, 20 years after the initiation of uh, the registry, we realized that the clinical presentation is basically the same over the time. And if you look back into the historic reports from the 19th century and 18th century, you find that a crushing pain, a sudden onset of pain, yeah and the almost unexperienced intensity of pain is a typical feature of aortic dissection, either in type B or in the type A scenario. So that didn't change. The problem we have today by misunderstanding this symptomatology mm. is still not resolved. We're getting better. We're using biomarkers, mm. with increasing, increasing frequency. We're using early imaging CTs available in every little hospital yeah. over the globe, essentially. So with the awareness of these typical clinical presentations mm. and features, the next step to confirmatory diagnosis using imaging, usually CT or TOE, is easy, but it needs to be done. It needs to click in the brain of the first medical contact. So have a higher threshold on, on, on the initial presentation. A lower threshold on the lower initial. Lower threshold, I should initial. say, yeah. 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 Okay, um, does the, uh, uh, Mark, with the question to you, does the IRAD conform with what we heard from uh, Professor Nienabar. Does the IRAD conform with the technological supremacy of imaging modalities? Did, did they conform with that? I mean, uh, because in, in, in what I've just mentioned, they say that chest x-rays has been diminished. So uh, do they conform with the uh, radiological supremacy of imaging modality? And the second question is, did the IRAD want to prove that chest x-rays are useless? in type A aortic dissection? I mean, we could go down to be that uh, uh, petty if we want in the question. Well, uh, it is a fact that the CT scan is uh, largely uh, available and is a very fast examination and you get, you get all the information about the patient, about all the, all the uh, circulation about the circulation so in one single examination you get all the information you need for diagnosis but also for management I'm talking as a surgeon of yeah. course so chest x-rays uh, is a first level examination which is which remains uh, important in many cases but I think that with the CT scan we we, 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 we have the opportunity 
uh, to, to make a, a better and faster diagnosis, which is extremely important in, uh, in this patient. Prompt diagnosis is extremely important for a better prognosis. You know, this is a time-dependent, uh, this disease is a, a time-dependent prognosis, so the, 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 the sooner you get the, 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 the diagnosis, the, the sooner you get the treatment, and, uh, and better will be the survival. Yeah, so CT scan is a great examination, I think, for these patients. Sure. Also to, to define your surgical or endovascular strategy. So in one exam, you get everything. Unique. So actually, uh, just a plain CT X-ray could be misleading due yeah. to false, yeah. high rate of false negatives. Yeah. We have to understand, and we do understand now, and have shown that in IRAD, that aortas can dissect at a normal diameter. In other words, the mediastinum does not need to be enlarged on a on a CT yeah. uh, on, a, on an X-ray on yeah. a chest X-ray, but still you can have a, di a dissection, and CT will prove that because you separate the true and the false lumen, which you cannot. On plain on CT, on oh, that's, plain very, that's very that's very clear to us now. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Nienabar. So, um, did the IRAD fail to demonstrate uh, an overall positive effect that endovascular uh, therapies and strategies in the setting of type A ac acute dissection and type B, as a matter of fact, are fruitless? Did you did you consider this? What what's your take on this? Well, the IRAD has actually published in JACC in 2013 that the endovascular treatment shows after two years a clear benefit and separation from the attrition rate in medically managed patients. Yeah. So basically confirming the uh, before discussed instead trial, the registry confirmed that you have a long-term benefit from an early investment, meaning, meaning it's a, a TVAR intervention, but you can show that up to two years. It, it basically pans out after two years in mm -hmm. the long-term follow-up. And then you could, say, you could show, even in the IRAD registry and supporting the randomized data, that, there is an, uh, an, that the investment of a TVAR pays off late as a beneficial preemptive measure to uh, avoid late complications such as rupture. Okay. Is there any, any clear-cut benefits to say that the angiotensin release, uh, the ARBs uh, and the beta blocker as demonstrated by Lacroix and Alpha Triadis, uh, are there any benefits of, of using that? Because the IRAD, like I mentioned before, they said that beta blocker and the angiotensin receptin blockers, diuretics and statin, they have all been prescribed more frequently, and especially upon patient discharge. So are there any clear-cut benefits of, of the usage of this medication? How, and how does the IRAD explain the paradox? Professor Nienaba. Well, I think <coughs> with the improved care and better understanding of the pathophysiology of any kind of dissection, we understand that heart rate should be lowered, anti-impulse medication should mm -hmm. be initiated. And due to the observation, the dissection goes along with an inflammatory response, statins are probably helpful. There is no ample evidence that statins need to be done, need to be prescribed, but we see that the community understand that and believe the inflammatory story and thereby uses statins more often. The other reason to use it is the frequent coincidence of aortic problems with coronary problems or vascular problems to begin with. In other words, the patient may need statins anyway. Mm. And the fact that we're dealing now with an acute dissection triggers the awareness again to think of anti-inflammatory treatment using statins. They're the only treatment that we have so far. Great. Okay. So now I'm going to open the question to you both. Feel free to uh, comment on that. It's the dissection paradox. Uh, it was a little bit puzzling when I was reading about it, and obviously, you know, we come to learn about these things uh, uh, as we read more. The analysis of this paradox issue illustrates precisely the hospital versus population issues, of which uh, yourself, uh, Prof. Nienabar, uh, as one of the eminent uh, IRAD founders, has um, have in insight insightfully called attention to. Um, w what is meant by the uh, dissection paradox? What is that? Well, with the improved awareness and with better imaging and with closer look into a given patient, we analyze more cases of dissection. We find them earlier, we get them into the hospital earlier, and we don't lose them prior to death. A patient who is really in a bad situation usually dies in the hospital. He makes mm. it to the hospital, but we're basically too late to treat them. So we're seeing more cases, and despite our better diagnostics and our more swift 
treatment, we are not able to improve very much the outcome because we are dealing with the most complex and most uh, severe patient that reached now the hospital that they, did, that they didn't do a couple of years ago. They were basically biologically excluded, mm. uh, leading to better outcome, ironically. Mm. Now with getting everybody into the hospital almost, we're losing these patients in the hospital. That's the paradox. That's the paradox. Despite we're getting better in treatment and diagnosis, we're losing more patients due to the complexity of the disease when they present. Mm. We see them earlier, but since they're in a, sh in a worse shape, we lose some of them. Uh, Marco, did the IRAD add anything to your practice as a surgeon? <laughs> this, is a very, this is a very good question. I think IRAD for me represents a great opportunity to learn from such experts in the aortic field. So, yeah. uh, and IRAD, uh, by uh, providing the possibility to analyze uh, uh, data on such a large cohort of patients, of course, can help guiding surgeons and, of course, myself yeah. in, uh, in doing my in doing my job. I think that one of the, just to going back to the, to the earlier point, I think that uh, uh, it's clear that uh, uh, outcomes are mostly depending on preoperative uh, comorbidities. Um, preoperative complications related to the dissection process are in most of cases cause of death for, for, for these patients. So I think that IRAD give us the chance to, to, to have a deeper knowledge of uh, risk factors for this patient and can help us selecting the best patients for, for, for the operation. So I think this is a very important point. Patient selection, risk stratification, and uh, uh, that, that, that is the greatest point, I think, from, from either, from the surgical point right. of view. But it's still, in terms of the surgical point of view, if I may add here, the gold standard is to get the patient outside the operating theater. Yeah. Uh, which I read obviously reflected uh, uh, on that by in terms of saying that you know the uh, the hospital mortality improved for type A aortic dissection. Now that we have more in the armamentarium of uh, of surgical uh, procedure to be done in terms of the dissection, because now we can see uh, reports coming out that patient that actually surgeons are being more aggressive and are actually treating the dissection up to the hemi arch, up to the total arch, and with the advance of, uh, as, as, uh, um, as uh, Professor Sherney has pointed out previously, is the indication, uh, the, um, he pointed out a very nice uh, thing, he said, indication uh, in the technology is always there. So could we, could we yeah. say that the IRAD influenced all this uh, aggressiveness as a surgeon to have an input into all this? Thank you for this very important uh, question. We all follow the, the principle to keep the patient alive after the mm. operation. So the, 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 the principle, the basic principle is to, usually, is to perform the shortest, simplest operation, that operation that has the least traumatic impact on the patient, that is aiming to minimize the operative risk, the operative mortality, which remains substantial. But there is a group of surgeons, as you said, that are advocating more extensive uh, yeah. operations on yeah. the root, proximally and on the arch or the semi-thoracic or the distally. And that is uh, aiming to contrast uh, the occurrence of late aortic events and late need for the operation that are clearly related to the aneurysmal degeneration of the dissected re residual uh, aorta. We try to, uh, with IRAD, we try to give an answer to this uh, uh, important uh, controversy and question and we um, compared uh, we had about 2,000 patients operated yeah. for type A dissection. We compared on the root, so bental operation or uh, uh, root replacement operation versus more conservative root uh, repairs. And what we found is that um, in terms of early mortality, there was no differences between the two uh, groups, something that might support a more aggressive approach on the root. But when we look at long-term data, then we see that we don't have any data showing a clear survival or clinical benefit from more aggressive operation versus less aggressive operation. So based on that, I think that um, surgical strategy and uh, the extent of the replacement should remain based on patient characteristics, yeah. on, uh, on anatomical characteristics, yeah. and also should remain based on uh, the experience of the operating surgeon. So I would 
uh, I would uh, um, go for more aggressive intervention in younger patients, in patients with Marfan disease or connective tissue disorders, in patients who have uh, clearly uh, a catastrophic aortic condition at the, at the moment of the operation. So patients that have a high risk of re-intervention, uh, that would be less aggressive in patients uh, uh, presenting with a higher risk uh, with a higher risk profile. So I think that we, sh I don't like fundamentalistic uh, positions, uh, uh, white or black. Yeah. I think that we should, uh, uh, this is the most difficult part of the operation, to define and to decide what is the best operation in the single patient. Thing. Great, thank you for this elaborative answer. Uh, Professor Nienabar, did the IRAD alter the natural history of aortic dissection? Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> well, when we set out and I found it, uh, IRAD in 1996, together with Eric Isselbacher, 20 years ago now, we were basically both interested in uh, outcome data yeah. in this disease. However, this disease is, has such a low, Im, uh, low incidence that we were basically not able to find any data in the literature yeah. or to generate data ourselves. So the idea was born to collect data worldwide to be able to make such a yeah. statement. Yeah. But I would say, if you ask me for a natural history, the natural history of dissection is not changed. Yeah. Why should it be changed? However, we note that the demographics tell us that pa patients usually live longer, and even dissection patients tend to, be, to live a little bit longer. Mm. We know from IRAD over the years and the decades that the surgical outcome in type A is better, with, um, came down in terms of mortality from 30 to l just below 20%, yeah. that a, f a lower rate of patients are rejected from surgery in the type A scenario. It used to be close to 20%, now it's 8.6% of patients that are rejected and possibly candidates for another treatment strategy, which may be a different topic. I'm talking about endovascular. But this is basically only possible in such a large collection of data in a registry. And that's why the registry is important. Yeah. Not necessarily as level one evidence, but as thought generation, generating uh, hypotheses. You, know, you get an idea what to study a little closer. You get an overview of what's happening. To the disease. I'm going to finish with you, uh, Prof. Nienabar. Um, wh wh where is the IRAT today and what is the future? Well, IRAT has collected, uh, I think, close to 6,000 patients already with dissection. They're branching out now into genetic aspects, into interventional aspects, into biomarkers, and even into rehabilitation after dissection, after operations or interventions for dissection. So IRAD is branching out into specialities if okay. you want to. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a good way of putting it. Okay, I know that uh, you have a long day or you had a long day uh, so far. Well, I just would like to thank you for, for your thoughts and comments and for the, obviously for the time uh, that you shared with us today. Thank you very much for My being with us today. Thank, well, you. thank you. For the CTSnet Aortic Portal, thank you very much for joining us. This is Mohamed Bashir.